me, Audra, and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, I'm not sure how you got here, but certainly I'm glad you came. And if you are new here, well, you're in for a treat. All right, if you enjoy chaotic frenetic energy, you like beauty, you like horror, and a little bit of commentary thrown in between, then I suggest you go on ahead and subscribe for the low, low price of zero, zero dollars. I will tell you a new memory from my memory box, which I recently discovered. Now, depending on which one of these videos goes up first, I'm either going to be explaining my memory box or, or it's gonna be this one where you're just getting a memory. Either way, it's a fun time. So this memory, comes from November 8th, 1999, when I was at USC, University of Southern California. It says, Dear Audra, on behalf of the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim and Visa, thank you for participating in the Who's That Duck contest on the Mighty Ducks website. Because you cor correctly identified the Who's That Duck player and were selected as a winner, includes you will find two tickets to the following game. Wednesday, November 17th, 1999, Mighty Ducks versus Calgary at 7.35 p.m. We look forward to seeing you at the game, but remember, you can only be selected as winner of the Who's That Duck contest once during the 1999-2000 season. Congratulations, and we'll see you at the Arrowhead Pond on November 17th. This is the letter, and I'm just gonna show you this portion of it. So that you know, official Mighty Ducks head. Like, this is how old it is, because now they're just the ducks. And also, I, I do have this, which is, which is a fun kazoo, a, a fun Mighty Ducks kazoo I got at the game. Listen, listen. They gave it, they just gave them away. So I think you go, wait, is it this way? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Bo. <laughs> and here are my socials. I love connecting with you all. Thank you so much for following me on Twitter, following me on Instagram. You can also follow me on Etsy. That will be linked in the description description below, as will where all I got all this fun jewelry. Uh, this came from Whisper to the Moon. I got one from the uh, Grim rings from Grim Herald, and another ring from Whisper to the Moon. Oh. What are we here with today, Audra? Well, today I wanted to talk about things, products or processes that I have changed my mind on. I think it's really important to have one of these videos for me anyway, at least every few months, because in the beauty sphere, in it's very easy to get stuck on like one thing, right? And then it feels like you can't change your mind about things. And I'm here to tell you, you can change your mind. And I think I was inspired to do this from James Welsh because he actually does go back and he's like, these are products I changed my mind on either he now hates them or he now loves them and I thought that that would be fun to do in the makeup realm as well and it's very important to me to do so because I always want to feel like I have the right to change my mind about a product or a process and share that with you and see if you've changed your mind and see what things you've changed your mind on as well and it may give me an idea for the next time I talk about changing my mind all right let's dive in all right I have notes because I'm a professional youtuber now all right <laughs> Yeah. If you know, you know. The first thing I changed my mind on is matte foundation. Okay. Back in the day, us oily skinned bitches were told repeatedly that we needed to make sure that we didn't look like the oily skinned bitches that we are. And we are. So we were slathering matte foundation all over our faces, trying to keep our faces as dry as humanly possible. We needed to make sure we looked like we had no oil. And that was really dramatic, but that's exactly how it felt, all right? I now produce, pr prefer a natural, dewy finish to my skin. One, because I feel like a matte foundation just for, like, can often make you look older, and I'm already 40. I don't mind being 40, but I also don't wanna look 70 when I'm 40. I also find that wearing a dewy foundation is just, it's so much more versatile, it's so much more easier to deal with, it's so much more easier, like it's easier for me to put other stuff around it, it's easier for me to just look, you know, well put together, I don't feel as dry, I don't feel boring, I feel like my skin just looks luminous and that's something that I really enjoy and I never thought that I would be here today on the day of our goddess, what's today, September 27th? 27th telling you this is the day that I'm filming it on September 27th telling you that I like a dewy foundation but I'm looking at my foundations right now and at least four of them out of the 
seven I have there, four of them are dewy natural finish. <laughs> and that's just how it's gonna be. Like that's how it's gonna be. Also, I, well there's more than seven, there's eight, but let's, that, that, then that means there's actually five. Moving on, there's five of them that are actually natural and dewy and I just prefer that finish. I just think that I look nicer and you know, I look cute, I look cute, I look cute. Speaking of dry, I have definitely changed my mind on powdering. So way back in 2016, y'all, there was like this whole movement of just putting so much powder on your face, so much. And the thing is, even now when I see like those reels and TikToks where they're like putting all the powder on their face, my skin, just upon seeing that, cracks like I it makes me feel dry I feel thirsty when I see those videos and I think it's because for several reasons I don't like powdering I used to powder because I felt like you had to especially when you first started beauty YouTube and as you started that in 2016 I felt like oh, I have to powder I have to powder you can't like not powder your face everybody's powdering their face and I have a lot of powder for no reason but we're not gonna talk about that today what we're gonna talk about is why I don't enjoy powdering one as an oily skin bitch is was talking about previously the thing is using all of that powder for me my skin me personally tended to make me look worse throughout the day it made my makeup wear worse than it does if I don't wear powder because like I said I have oily skin there's nothing I can do to stop the oil from coming through which is one of the reasons why I do prefer the dewy foundation to the matte there's nothing I can do to stop this <laughs> just to stop the oil from coming through and I found that when I powdered now the oil was coming through and now it was sitting like there was powder and then there's like I look like cake you know gooey undone cake you know where you think the cake is done and then you stick your finger in and you're like oh my god it's not done but now that part is all blue and you can't fix that part of the cake unless you put frosting on top of it and I'm not putting any more frosting on my face so the point that I'm trying to get to was I felt like I did not look good and really just don't look good with loads of powder on my face. I do not like to set my eye. Um, I don't like to do any of that. I'm just like, no, no, I'm just gonna let my skin do this natural thing because I'd rather blot this than have powder on top and then try to blot that because then it's just pulling off large chunks of my makeup. Whereas if I leave my foundation and my concealer just as it is and I don't set them, I'm fine. I'm fine. Like sometimes I set for filming and if I'm going to take like for I'm going to take photos of this later. So I'm going to be like, "Oh, let me just throw a little bit of powder on." But I use residual powder. I should have merch someday that says residual powder. But I like to use a little bit of residual powder, not like brand new like just to kind of dry myself down. But I do not powder like I used to, and I'm really glad I changed my mind on that because I was looking a hot ass mess. And you know, I just I don't like the way it looks for me, for me personally. Another thing I had to change my mind on, which this is just so fun, is actually <laughs> bronzer in general, but the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush bronzer, okay? Listen, I did not like this initially. There were a few reasons why. I didn't feel like it was giving me enough of the color that I wanted. I didn't feel like it had enough red in it. And also, I changed my application style. This is another thing that can also help you to change your mind on products that maybe you thought you didn't like. Changing your application style can help that because I was using, and you may see this again in another video, which you actually, you're going to see this again in another video if you haven't seen it already, but I was using an angled brush. I actually do not like using the angled brush to apply my bronzer because I prefer a more diffused look to my bronzer. I like it to just kind of be like, pcha, like warm. So I like it to be diffused. So I went back into using my BH brush and it has improved my bronzer game immensely. This is the number one. It improved my bronzer game immensely and I apply all of my bronzers using this br brush now. And since I started doing that, I was like, you know what, let me go try the Charlotte Tilbury brown bronzer again. And now I like it, now I like it. I don't love it, it's not my favorite, but like I really do like it a lot and I don't hate it anymore. So listen, Sh Charlotte Tilbury fans, I found one. I found a product from Charlotte Tilbury that I like. I thought I like just broke the world, um, but I'm, and I'm very excited. I like it. I'm going to be using it a lot more. I'm very excited by that. It's nice to be able to change your mind, and I changed my mind about that. The next, the next thing I've changed my mind on is setting sprays. Okay. I used to hate setting spray. They were always way too oily for me. They always had some weird glitter effect that I was not a fan of. I hated that. I was like, why do you have to put glitter in this? Like, what is, what, what's the point there? Why did you do this? Like, I don't want to be glittery. I just wanted to be like, 
you know, set and pretty and ready to go. And because of this setting spray, the Paradise Set uh, from BH Cosmetics, I ended up being like, you know what? I kind of, I kind of like it. I kind of like setting sprays. I think if you get the right combination or the right kind of setting spray, you may end up enjoying it. But again, I think a lot of that too was like this glowing to the heavens thing that was going on and it still happens now. But when uh, setting sprays a lot of times were coming out at the time that I was getting a lot of them, especially in beauty boxes, almost all of them had some kind of um, glitter in it and it made it very sticky and I was not a fan of that stickiness at all, it made me want to immediately remove my makeup, which oftentimes I did and that sucked. But now I really like setting spray, at least that one, and I'm gonna try some more now because I'm like, maybe I don't hate all setting sprays. I just hated that like dewy glow finish thing that they were doing previously, and now I'm gonna start getting giving more setting sprays a chance. This is a big one. This is a big one. A big thing that I've changed my mind on is that there is no right way to do skincare. The reason I say this is because especially now skincare is exploding okay everybody wants to everybody's interested in skincare finding out what they can do for skincare and then it's also leaving other people like we found out on a live stream it is leaving some other people feeling left out or bad that they're not doing all of this these things for their skincare that they don't have a 10 step skincare routine that they don't have a 17 uh, step skincare routine guess what you don't have to honestly the only three three things you have to do for your skincare just three things wash it like cleanse it moisturize it and put on some sunscreen those are the three things those are the three things everything else is extra you don't have to use a toner you don't have to use an essence you don't have to mask if you don't want to you don't have to use zit patches if that's not your thing there's so much you don't have to do cleanse moisturize and sunscreen that's it i feel like there's so many people who are telling us which way to do things and even i fall in prey to it, it was like oh they told me not to do this i'm not going to do it if it's working for your skin do it, but there really isn't a right way because you'll see all these articles telling you how to properly layer your serums, and but they all contradict each other, it feels like. It feels like you have one that tells you to do it this way, another one that tells you to do what's happy for your skin. If you've been layering them one way and it's been working for you, keep it up. There isn't a right way. Just do those three things that I said before, cleanse, moisturize, and sunscreen. You're, you're fine. You do not have to have some magical, whimsical, like melting pot of witchcraft to do skincare, even though that's the way I do it. Okay, we're at the sixth thing, number six. The sixth thing that I've changed my mind on uh, is gonna go hand in hand with the seventh thing, which is singles versus palettes i have completely changed my like a complete 180 on that i used to be a palette ass who i was like palettes only please because i can't really mess around with singles it's so confusing <laughs> it's so confusing and now look at me look at me hold on and this is only one of them we're not going to talk about the rest okay but now i'm just a whole ass singles Ew. I love them so much. I love them so much. The versatility, all the different things that you can do. I feel like my creativity is completely unlocked and I can just do whatever I want when I have singles versus a palette. And the big thing for me is that when I look at palettes, I feel like one, there's so many shades that I have over and over again and it's not by choice. Okay, listen, it is a very important to distinguish that it's not by choice, right? Because you can buy all the singles in the world and still have shades that are similar, but you chose those, you decided that you wanted them. But when it comes to palettes, I feel like there's so many times where there's like a beige, say, a beigey transition shade, a more tan transition shade, a brown of some form, maybe a black. I have enough of those, you know, and it feels like they're in every single palette. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't want that. And it's one of the reasons why I started to really love singles. And I know it can be very, very intimidating. And I felt that way at first. What I realized is that I don't have to make it difficult and I don't have to make it complicated. Literally, all I have to do is go to one of my many favorite brands. I go to Luxie, Give Me Glow, JD Glow, Davina, Terra Moons. And I just go there and I go, this pretty, put it in the cart. This pretty, put it in the cart. This pretty, put it in the cart. You don't have to have a color story. You can just buy one of their bundles if you want to. You could buy five, you could buy seven, you can buy 17. You can do it however you want to. You don't have to be making like a special palette. I played with Lethal Cosmetics. I made my own palette from there. But again, I still chose shades that I wanted. So it seems very daunting when you first go to the site and you look at it because you're thinking to yourself, 
if you're like me, you have that palette mentality where you're thinking you've got to build a palette. Ah, uh -uh, new, new, new. You don't have to build a palette. You just buy the things you want. And it's making it life so much fun for me and beauty and I'm enjoying makeup more. And it also made me feel really significantly more confident with how I do my eyeshadow because I really started playing with all these beautiful shimmers. Today I have on Sydney Grace on my eyes. I have on the Cosmic Oasis palette from Drench. I also have on, uh, who else? I think that that might be it. It might be them. That might be the only two palettes that I have on if not if, if I think of anything else I'll just pop it in here I think I actually have on looksy I have some looksy on as well so that's in the inner eye but I really just get to play with things and mix and match in a way that I never really thought about and now when I play with my palettes I do the same thing I no longer feel like I open a palette and I have to use that palette I now feel like I open it and I'm gonna be like I just came for this shade I'm pulling this out I'm done and I did do that because I do have a Lime Crime Venus palette in here too so that's the fun part so yeah my opinion of singles versus palettes has completely changed and I much prefer singles over palettes however on Number seven, and the final thing that I've changed my mind on for this video, the seventh thing I changed my mind on is big palettes versus small palettes. Listen, I much prefer a small palette to a large palette. In fact, when I go back and look, I realize that I decluttered a lot of my larger palettes and kept a lot of my smaller palettes. There's several reasons why, but the biggest reason is I feel like with a smaller, expertly curated palette, there's, it's easier to work with, number one. It's easier for your eye to play with things. It's easier for you to just do like a one shadow or two shadow look if that's what you're looking for. And I just feel like it's less intensive and less scary, especially if you're new to makeup. One of the biggest mistakes I think that I did make when I first got into makeup was buying large Morphe palettes. And this is without knowing anything about the brand Morphe. This isn't me being like, oh, Morphe. It's actually me saying, I made this mistake because those 35 palettes, huge. 35 shades and it just and some of them were very similar to one another that's neither here nor there the main point is that there were so many shadows in there that it kind of hurts your brain and if you were a new makeup lover and new to eyeshadow Getting a small palette like this is much easier for you to play with because it's easier for you to go, okay, well, I want to play with the yellow and the brown. That's all I want to do today. And you play with the yellow and the brown. You only have two shimmers in this one. Um, this one is from Sosu. I, I, Sosu, it's, I, I got this on Beauty Bay a while back. What, like in the winter and now we're going into the winter again I got this on Beauty Bay in the winter um, and it was a collaboration from Suzanne Jackson and CLE makeup and it's called the Bare and Bougie eyeshadow palette but when you look at palettes like this it's not as confusing it's not as daunting you don't have a bunch of shimmers you don't have tons of mattes if you want an all matte look you can do it if you want just a one shimmer look you can do it if you want to mix and match you can and it doesn't it doesn't overwhelm you it's not overly stressful it doesn't put you in a position to where you're just like I don't know where to start you can really just be like uh, I'm, and you can do it in fours for those of you that are new you can just do squares if you want to if you want to do this square you can if you want to do this square you can um, with this palette you know, first going in, if I was brand new and I wanted to do a neutral, I would just use like the three over here, like, or actually, you know, the four, because, you know, I, I like a lot of eyeshadow. But you can, for this one, I would say do L's. So you could just be like, boop, boop. And then on this side, you could go boop, boop. And then there you go, you gotta look. And then you can start playing with it. I prefer smaller palettes because again, it's fun. You can grab something from it. Also, as I have tons and tons of shimmers, I also have these like really cool little palettes like from Dose uh, Colors. I have their Berries palette, their Blushing Berries palette. This is so fun to mix and match with and that's the other thing I love about a small palette. I can mix and match these a lot easier and so I find them to be more valuable to me than larger palettes. Because I have a palette this size and it's not particularly expensive, in my opinion, it, money is subjective to everybody but to me this isn't super duper expensive so I don't mind spending a little coin getting this smaller curated palette but I kind of do hate spending you know 50 60 70 80 a hundred dollars on a large palette when realistically I'm buying that for like maybe four or five shades and if it's a 15 shade or an 18 shade 
I'm, I'm kind of annoyed that I spent that money. Realistically, I wanted a few shades, but when I spend, you know, 20 bucks for this, I'm like, ah, I'm not mad at that. That's cool. I can deal with that. $22, like this isn't upsetting because I can mix and match this. So this makes it more valuable to me. I can use this in so many different looks and it, each look is going to turn out different because I'm putting it with my singles. So yeah, I've changed my mind on that. All right, y'all, that is it. That is the video. Are there any things that you have changed your mind on in the world of beauty? Did some of these things make you feel better or worse? Did some of these things make you actually want to go out and try things? Let me know in the comments below. I love discussing with y'all, y'all below. It is an amazing day. And as usual, huge shout out to my patrons. Yeah. All right, y'all, thank you so much for watching this video. If you got here to the very, very end, because it's 20 some odd minutes long, go ahead, do me a favor, drop a banana emoji because I just I just want to see bananas. And until next time, it costs zero, zero dollars to be kind. It really does, and it's totally good for your soul. All right, y'all, thank you so much, and deuces! <sighs> My armpits are so wet. Number five. I don't know if you know this, but there's there's been five things that we're at. We're the, we're at the fifth thing now. The fifth thing. Or the sixth thing. No, we're at the fifth. No, yep, we're at the sixth thing. So sorry. That's a sentence I never thought I'd say. I love that I have a ring that says eat shit. Bye. Go small palette. Eat shit and die. Like that is such an 80s ass statement to say and like I'm a child of the 80s, fool. I love having notes. <laughs>